Good afternoon, gladiators. We who are about to play salute you. Welcome, everybody, to episode two of season two of The Games Gladiator. I am, of course, your host, Oliver Joyce from Whiskey Barrel Studios. And each episode, I'm going to be taking you through games of my past, games of my present, games that I've never played, games that I'm good at, games that I'm not so good at, and games that I'm just curious about. And here in episode two, we're playing a game that I'm yet to play. It's a game that I've had in my Steam library for quite some time. The game's been around for quite a long time. It came out in 2013, and it is Star Quail's Tiny Barbarian DX. This is a pixelated adventure game. Uh, it's a platformer, basically Conan the Barbarian, if he were around in the 8-bit or even 16-bit era, really. Um, I'm looking forward to checking it out because I love Conan the Barbarian and I love uh, platform games. And I love retros. So without further ado, you and I will head to Pixel High Borea, don our swords and sorcery gear and our um, loincloth and Viking-style helmet and um, pick up a sword and let us get stuck into Tiny Barbarian DX. All right, here we are, Tiny Barbarian DX. Really cool um, pixel art title screen and some epic chiptunes music. We're going to select adventure mode. I believe there is a uh, like an endless mode versus the horde. But we're going to just play uh, chapter one, the Serpent Lord. We can choose one or two players, which is kind of cool. Uh, if we had a friend with us, we could be uh, playing two players, which I used to love back in the old days, in the um, 80s, when retro wasn't retro, uh, as far as these kind of games go. Um, and you could play two players in games like Double Dragon and so on. Really cool little uh, Ghosts and Goblin style um, side on map there. And we begin the game with what looks to be a little reference to Conan on the... Um, the tree of woe and i'm stuck on the tree and if i press my movement i'm getting attacked by a vulture and eventually i can scare them off grab a chicken dinner and we're away so jump with x attack with uh the w weapon a couple of uh cool animated um swipes for the movement <laughs> Little um, wrestling style uh, people's elbows that are. Grab those coins. And this game, as I mentioned, came out in uh, 2013, and that was really quite early on in the um, indie games explosion. And not a lot of games were being made that used pixel art. Um, you know, it's, uh, most, well, not most, many indie games these days make. Uh, use pixel art and it's an aesthetic that I love but it's very common you know um, but back when this game came out I can't imagine it was um, well known and it would have stood out a lot of people thought what are you doing why are you making a 3d game but it seems that um, they had some success because the game has been around for a while but it was quite popular well there's a giant eagle it's quite tough actually I'm already down to two health. You know, it's very simple, sort of tile-based. Um, he can flex, that was cool. How did I do that? Ah, I don't know much what the flex button was, but it's pretty cool. There's something kind of... Um, ageless is the wrong word, because you know, it's obviously... Uh, a style from the 80s um, arcade era but there's something that doesn't age you know what I mean as far as it's as fun now as it was back then and instantly accessible as well oh, that's cool you can climb hang on to the edge of the cliff you know and, and even in 10 years time 
people probably were still making games like this. Uh, 3D, on the other hand, I feel like dated quite um, not as well. You know, it. Um, you look at the early PlayStation One 3D games, and they look awful. I know the PlayStation Classic was released recently, and unlike the Super Nintendo Classic or the um, even the I think it's Sega brought one out with Sonic and so on. The PlayStation games from that era just looked awful. The 3D was murky. The textures were um, just murkier again. And the models were clunky and horrible. And the frame rate, yuck. All you have to do is go back and look at a game like uh, GoldenEye. Which I remember so fondly as being this amazing looking, brilliant, you know, first person shooter. It's unplayable now. You couldn't play it. I mean, if you did, you'd be a sucker for punishment. But a game like um, this, which takes its roots from the arcades, and particularly, I mean, reminds me a lot of uh, Black Tiger, and uh, thematically, Rastan Saga. But it's instantly playable, and it's obviously, you know, a few modern conveniences, I'm sure. Um, not a lot of those games had the ability to do parallax scrolling as well as this, even though it's subtle. There's still three layers of parallax behind with the mountains and the sky and so on. But it's instantly, you know exactly what you're going to do and you could say it looks primitive, but it's an aesthetic that is awesome. We're going to take on some um, evil snake. Oh, big hit. So if you dash forward like that, you can strike them. Now, I've no doubt there's probably some secrets like in Castlevania where if you hit certain bricks you'll be able to get treasures and so on but that is beyond the scope of this video yeah like as i was saying i haven't played this before but it feels instantly familiar in the best kind of way uh, i love that kind of animation climb along the uh, rope vine oh cool we can smash that we've got some treasure there but we cannot continue along that so we'll have to climb back up this would be quite fun to players actually I used to love, as I was mentioning before, two-player games in my childhood. Friends would come over and we'd play Double Dragon and Golden Axe and that kind of thing. And one person would have a control, the other one would have the other one. And you'd play until you both ran out of continues and lives. And you got really good at it. You know, one after, you know, each afternoon and you'd get a little bit further, a little bit further until you could finish it. Um, my dear friend Jeff Wicks and I would play Double Dragon and Kadash. Um, multiplayer all the time we got to the point where we could finish it on one life you know what i mean but i remember playing kadash in uh, season one of the games gladiator and just struggling i didn't even get past the first dungeon really just shows you how your skills can be honed over many years as a child and then you lose it all whoa whoa spikes not good we're down to our last heart we killed that eagle really cool um uh chip tune soundtrack Oh, good, we started at that checkpoint, which wasn't that far away. I'm, in fact, uh, making a pixel art platformer of my own uh, this year, um, which I announced last month. The game I'm making is based on the gladiator hero Spartacus, who, of course, uh, freed the slaves and um, led a rebellion against the Romans and ultimately um, paid the ultimate price for it. But... I'm making a platform game not too dissimilar to this. It'll be a brutally hard um, game where you have to free slaves, defeat Roman soldiers, escape dungeons, and so on. Tile-based, of course. You know, it'll be it'll have its differences from this, but I'm really looking forward to playing a little bit more of this and studying it and seeing what I can be um, learn from it. My levels, of course, won't be so long as this. I plan on having you know levels that you can finish in a minute or so, but require a bit more. Um, finesse and even a bit of puzzle solving oh cool bit of coins i wonder what we can use the coins for perhaps we can um only just for your score i guess but there's no rpg elements to it i wouldn't mind adding some kind of you know rpg elements to mine a little bit of um you know get extra boots swords that kind of thing so i'm going to be starting work on that next month which will be very exciting my first game in uh, Unity. Well, actually, my second game because I built a um, 3D game called Dark Rolls based on partly Marble Manless and partly 
Dark Souls. Oh, this is tough. Well, that's a bit tough. I'm going to tell you. Now, I'm, I don't really know how many levels there are in this game, but, you know, there's six chapters, apparently, and that's pretty sizable. Even level one is kind of challenging. I feel like it would be best done justice with the gamepad, which I have, but I haven't hooked up. Simple sprites, but they're animated quite nicely. I don't know if I love the um, all yellow tiles, but, you know, there could be a little bit more variety in them, but it's pretty cool. It has a, like I said, a really Conan vibe to it. You could easily see this in a video arcade from 1986. Ah, oh, that's a tough section. I did a uh, Games Gladiator video of Rastan Saga back early on in Season 1. And that was brutal, even tougher than this. And partly because the hit detection wasn't so good and so on. This plays a lot better and controls a lot better. But there are still some tough enemies like that eagle, which swoops down on you. And these aggressive cobras. A lot of the time the uh, challenges in a game like this are being patient. You want to rush ahead and rush ahead, but you've got to learn the enemy patterns and know when your opening is. Like here I need to jump when they spit. Knock that guy out of the way. Wait for the Cobra. Jump past him. There we go. People's elbow. There you go. It's quite a long section, really, to... Ah! To play through on one life. Oh. It's quite addictive. This game is actually available on the um, Switch. And it seems to me like the perfect kind of game for the Switch. Um, which is just tailor-made for indie games. And particularly 2D style indie games like this. And, you know, Stardew Valley, that kind of thing. Give me some delicious hot chicken. I need to heal. Oh, that's tough. Come on. <laughs> Alright. Well, look, I think that's about enough of that. Um, cool game, Tiny Barbarian. Um, I'm a fan. I, uh... Love the music. Let's turn the music off now. But uh, cool game. I would like to actually um, play through a bit more and see what else there is to it. How many levels and are there giant bosses? What other secrets does it hold? Um, if you're into games like Rastan and Black Tiger and challenging platform battle games, give Tiny Barbarian DX a go. It's been around for a long time, so you can pick it up quite cheap. I don't know how much it costs on Switch. Games on Switch tend be a lot more expensive uh nintendo being what they are but um certainly uh a lot of fun and i um would like to play that a little bit more sometime anyway just a short video today i uh, hope you enjoyed it and i look forward to seeing you next episode on the games gladiator thank you of course to all new subscribers and to the great fans who have stuck with me for so long on this and my regular channel videos all the sword and sandal stuff and everything in the coming months i'm going to be bringing you um game development videos on the making of spartacus so if you're interested in making your own uh 2d platformer game similar to tiny barbarian uh, with pixel art and everything um stick with me and we will learn together all right everybody uh, enjoy your rest of your weekend uh or the week or wherever you're up to when you're watching this and I will see you on the next episode of The Games Gladiator. Bye for now.